Um, man, it's basically nicotinamide NAD plus heaven for your body. Um, that's why I feel 10 times younger energy wise, because well, all of my NAD dependent enzymatic reactions within my body are firing on all cylinders. Now, to upregulate mitochondrial function further, what I already alluded to several different times in this video about the mitochondrial derived peptides, there's actually one of them out there, which is highly beneficial that you can actually purchase online. MOTS C, also known as mitochondrially encoded 12S ribosomal RNA. Now, again, MOTS C is a peptide derived from the mitochondria themselves. It plays an important role in metabolic function of the human cells also. It's an endogenous or endocrine hormone that the mitochondria produce that can actually diffuse into systemic circulation and potentiate some effects into other tissues of the body. The benefits of MOTC have actually been well documented, albeit that all of the studies that have been performed on MOTC have been in rodent models. So keep that in mind, all of the results that I've read show that MOTC treatment is actually highly promising. It's been shown that MOTC can have a beneficial effect on age-related diseases, including diabetes, cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, postmenopausal obesity, and even Alzheimer's. MOTC treatment could potentially reduce aging-related mitochondrial metabolic dysfunction. MOTC can improve insulin sensitivity on skeletal muscle and improve glucose homeostasis in the bloodstream, improve fat metabolism through the activation of the AMP kinase pathways. MOTC is also an important regulator of energy balance and amino acid, carbohydrate, and fat metabolism. MOTC actually triggers the activation of the AMP kinase by accumulating ICAR, which I didn't get an opportunity to try in exogenous form, not to be mistaken for acetyl L carnitine. This is ICAR, which is um, used in doping to improve endurance. I wasn't able to source it. I would love to run ICAR in combination with MOTC, but we'll have to wait if that experiment ever takes place because all the sources that uh, present ICAR to me um, are unfortunately sold out. So stay tuned for that experiment. Um, MOTC regulates ATP and ADP, ATP and AMP ratios, and it also improves the overall antioxidant response to reactive oxidant species within the mitochondria and the cell themselves when they're under oxidative stress. So not only does MOTC improve mitochondrial functioning, it also upregulates the response to this uh, reactive oxygen species. And this way, it keeps mitochondrial functioning and biogenesis sustained because now these reactive oxygen species are easier to be mitigated with antioxidants. So if you put all of this together, upregulating mitochondrial functioning and upregulating this uh, antioxidant response and antioxidant status with everything that we discussed in this stack. I mean, it basically means that everything is functioning correctly, but at a much higher level. That being said, MOTC is also highly expensive. So it's a bit of a luxury. I've noticed that MOTC supplementation or injections basically leveled up my stack with, man, if I have to quantify it, 50% more benefits, I would say, regarding the overall energy levels that I have, my overall focus, um, the benefits that I have regarding my cognition and overall fat loss or anabolism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? I feel that my stack has leveled up quite substantially by the addition of five milligrams MOTC twice per week. I wanna give you guys a fair warning about MOTC. A lot of people experience an allergic reaction. Now, I've only had the opportunity to try two different brands from my compounding pharmacy and one of the sources that I was able to find online. I don't think there's so many manufacturers of MOTC. So this allergic reaction can occur at the site of administration, especially when you do subcutaneous administrations of MOTC, whether that's 2.5 milligrams or five milligrams in one cc. Um, it almost looks like cellulitis. It looks horrible. It's like bubbly and red. And the first time this happened to me, um, I honestly thought I had an acute allergic reaction or a severe infection, but it seemed to dissipate within an hour or two. And what I've noticed is if I do mod C5 milligrams or 2.5 milligrams very close to a subcutaneous carnitine administration, so let's say a couple inches from each other, this seems to exacerbate the effect. So what I do nowadays is administer mod C intramuscularly, 2.5 milligrams bilaterally in the outer quads. So that's 2.5 milligrams left, 2.5 milligrams right both in one milliliter solution, so that it's a little bit more diluted, 
to mitigate some of this reaction. And then an hour later, after the mod C has been absorbed into systemic circulation, I do my 500 milligrams carnitine injection subcutaneously. I might still get a little bit of a rash, a little bit of an allergic response, but it's severely diminished. And I've also done my subcutaneous carnitine administration an hour before intramuscular mod C administrations, and it seems to yield to the same effect regarding the reduction of this allergic response. So keep that in mind, um, even though I'm getting my mod C from a compounding pharmacy and I highly believe into the quality of their product, um, this is an allergic reaction you can expect. It's well documented on Reddit from the people who've also used mod C. Again, so spacing your carnitine away from your mod C seems to mitigate this to a certain extent. But if you only use mod C and you don't use injectable carnitine, um, then you might still get an allergic response. So please keep that in mind. It will dissipate within an hour or two. So that's, you know, a little bit of a side effect you have to look past. But otherwise than that, besides the cost and this little side effect, I would say that mod C is highly worth it. And then the last thing you can do, even more expensive than things we mentioned previously, is the inclusion of 5-amino-1-MQ. 5-amino-1-MQ inhibits the methylation of nicotinamide within adipose tissue. It doesn't inhibit methylation within the liver, which is the primary source of methylation of a lot of biological compounds. 5-amino-1-MQ solely acts within adipose tissue, preserving nicotinamide for the NAD plus selfish pathway, which increases overall nicotinamide mononucleotides, NAD+, NADH, NADP, and NADPH concentrations within adipose tissue, all resulting in an increase in overall fat metabolism within the adipose tissue, allowing you to lose body fat easier, especially at the later stages of contest prep, when uh, fat loss some starts to become more cumbersome and uh, more resilient, the more pharmacological interventions you throw at it. So 5-amino-1-MQ is solely there to improve fat loss during a cutting phase. You can add that into this mitochondrial support stack to help with the NAD plus selvage pathway within adipose tissue and potentially other organs or other tissues of the body as well. Albeit that I can't really find any conclusive evidence that 5-amino-1-MQ is able to increase NAD plus concentrations or glutathione concentrations or SAMI concentrations anywhere else besides adipose tissue. So Again, a lot of these compounds haven't been thoroughly examined in a multitude of different settings. What I notice with 5-amino-1-MQ supplementation is that besides the improved fat loss is that um, energy levels also increase. And I've heard this from several other people that co-supplement NMN with NAD plus and 5-amino-1-MQ as well as MOTC. So if you put all four together, um, man, it's basically nicotinamide NAD plus heaven for your body. Um, that's why I feel 10 times younger energy-wise, because, well, all of my NAD-dependent enzymatic reactions within my body are firing on all cylinders. And then there's four compounds which I'd like to discuss in this video, but the deep dive I'm going to save for an upcoming video about how to maximize your endurance, so that it's not necessarily for strength and muscle building, but solely a video to optimize endurance, whether that's for cycling or for MMA, that video will solely be dedicated to how to get the most out of your body endurance-wise. These four compounds are all produced in Russia or Ukraine. I would classify them as selective mitochondrial function modulators, the SMFMS compounds. Those are bimethyl, mildronate, um, hypoxin, and mexibol. Basically, long story short, they're all anti-hypoxia medications with characteristics of adoptogens and nootropics. Basically, they improve physical performance by altering mitochondrial functioning, whether that's in glycolysis pathways or Krebs cycle pathways. They reduce the overall oxygen consumption in the production of ATP. And this way, you can actually get more out of the physical performance without increasing oxygen demand. This also means that you have less reactive oxygen species that are being produced for this increased physical performance. Now, again, I want to save these compounds for a separate video. I'm still going to put them on the screen with my recommended dosages and my experiments over the last couple of months because I do think that they're highly beneficial. Personally, I prefer Bimetil once per week before leg day. That seems to potentiate the best effects regarding that strenuous workout with a little bit of nootropic properties allowing me to push to failure and beyond towards the end of the workout. 
And I also really liked meldonium, also known as meldronate, which actually shifts the energy production from oxidizing fatty acids to oxidizing glucose within the mitochondria. It does so by inhibiting carnitine synthesis. So combining meldronate with injectable carnitine or oral L-carnitine, L-tartrate kind of defeats the purpose. You would need to use meldonium separately. And this way, the oxygenation within the mitochondria shifts to glucose, requiring less oxygen, increasing the overall ATP output and reducing the reactive oxygen species that way. And it can also mitigate some of the metabolic issues which are associated with hyperlipidemia, particularly when combined to azetamib, which I alluded to earlier in this video. Now, again, I will do the deep dives when I finally get to this topic of how to increase endurance. I would advise you to keep these compounds on your radar if you're interested in improving mitochondrial function because all four manipulate mitochondrial function to a certain extent. If you're unsure of which of these adoptogens you would like to try as part of the mitochondrial support stack, I believe that Cosmic Nootropics actually has a adoptogen bundle with 10 or 20 tablets of each of these drugs so you can actually experiment with them and see which ones you like the most before you make your final purchase and buy a box or five because you really like that particular adoptogen. So head over to Cosmic Nootropics. I have a discount code for them, Vigorous10, to get 10% off. It's probably the best deal you can find anywhere on the internet regarding these Russian or Ukrainian made adoptogens, which again, manipulate mitochondrial functioning. Give that a try, give that a look consider them for future use. I personally enjoy taking them. Um, I would say that they contribute a little bit as part of the mitochondrial support stack, but they're mostly there to improve overall endurance. And especially if you're into endurance sports, I would really look into hypoxin, mildronate, bemetil, and mexibol in a much greater extent. Keep in mind that mildronate, um, meldonium is already on the doping list. And I believe that Bemetil is also on the watch list. So if you're competing in drug tested federations, well, you better stay clear. Okay, let's wrap it up. What I'll do is I'll make three separate protocols and put them on the screen right now. A budget oral only stack where you only have to take supplements in oral form and not spend too much money. I think if you take a B50 complex, vitamin C, vitamin A, E, vitamin K, ubiquinol, shilajit, fulvic acid, taurine, PQQ, nicotinamide mononucleotide, and acetylcysteine and oral L-carnitine L-tartrate, you'll already get a significant benefit out of that. Again, it's a very heavy supplementation stack, but I can almost guarantee it that you will notice a difference for the better. And for the guys that are a little bit more advanced, have a little bit more disposable income, that you have the B50 complex, the vitamin C, the vitamin E, the vitamin K, ubiquinol at a higher dose, silicate fulvic acid, tor taurine, PQQ at a higher dose, nicotinamide mononucleotides, N-acetylcysteine, including SAM-E, oral L-carnitine L-tartrate, and 5-amino-1-MQ. This protocol is almost twice the price, but will yield a much greater effect because you're taking particular compounds at a higher dose and preventing the breakdown of nicotinamide um, through methylation in adipose tissue. And then there's a pro-intermuscular intravenous stack, which again, contains all of the supplements, ubiquinol at a higher dose, Nicotinamide actually at a lower dose because now your 5-amino-1-MQ intake is so high that you don't need so much supplemental NMN. Um, N-acetylcysteine is there, SAM-E is there, um, IV NAD plus is there, as well as injectable glutathione, injectable vitamin C, and injectable B100 complex, all once per week, perhaps twice per week, if you can actually afford that. And then you take 5-amino-1-MQ to prevent the breakdown of nicotinamide mononucleotides. Uh, to a certain extent in the adipose tissue. This protocol, including MOTC twice per week, um, yeah, will be very expensive. They can run you upwards of $2,000 per month. So I'll really leave it up to you which compounds you want to try, which ones you feel are worthy of continuous use. You will have to experiment a little bit to see which protocol yields good results and then which additions yields uh, greater results, albeit that it might not be worth the price experimentation is required it's all up to you whether you start with uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide as the sole source of a supplement to improve mitochondrial function and the enzymatic reactions which occur within the body through the nad uh, pathways that's entirely up to you i feel it's highly beneficial um i'm going to run most of these compounds 
continuously after coming off cycle and into the near foreseeable future. Um, but I will still have to do additional research to see which of these compounds might have a negative effect on fertility. And even though I'm on a ton of antioxidants, again, oxidative stress within the testicles are not very conducive to your fertility levels. That's probably the worst on your fertility besides keeping your testicles at a very high temperature, which is also not very beneficial for your fertility. Okay, I'll leave it here. I hope it was helpful. I hope some of you guys can get a benefit out of this protocol, whether you start low or go on the, you know, the mega pro IV and intramuscular stack. That's up to your budget, I suppose. For now, we're out of time. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was educational. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys, full with NMN, full with NAD+, Mod C, and all of that good stuff. Man, even though I'm getting smaller because the testosterone is leaving my system, um, I still feel pretty freaking good. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.